This is Dr. Mariah White, host of Your Life Matters. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Julianne Condia, host of Rewritten here on Public House Media. Thank you so much for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Rewritten, where we will talk about you having limitless potential and can rewrite your story at any time. No matter your background, your past, or current situation, you can have the type of life you crave. A new show comes out every single Monday. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Rewritten. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Welcome to the C. Jane Sell Podcast, a relatable sales podcast for your weekly dose of sanity. I'm your host, Chelsea Dupre. And I'm your host, Lee Nevis. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our show today. I am so excited. Um, We are going to be talking about the positive things and shedding a little bit of sunshine on your day. So, get ready. Yeah. Get ready. So, to kind of start that (laughs) off, um, in the sales process, things can be always challenging. Correct? Oh, my gosh. And you hear a lot of, yeah, and you hear a lot of no's, right? All the time. Multiple times. Mm Mm-hmm. But there's ways that you can take those no's, maybes, yeses, whatever, Mm -hmm. and look at them a different way. So, I have a little story. So I have this very large client that I was really excited about. There's multiple decision makers. Two of the three said, yes, let's move forward. We can't wait. We're all in. And then the one started ghosting me. Also very common. So Very, very common. <laughs> so I just was very persistent. Follow up, follow up, follow up. That's a big thing in sales. Mm-hmm. Um, that and asking for the business. And I... Just kept doing that and finally got an email from her that says, Hey, Chelsea, um, sorry, you haven't really been around. I've been blah, blah, blah. Um, but we're going to stay with who we have, but we'd love to visit this topic later in the year. So I can either A, wallow in my misery and despair and hate my life and go home and eat some popcorn and cry myself to sleep, <laughs> or... I can take a different chance, look at it, and be like, later this year. So that's not a no. That's a maybe. So you're saying I got a chance. Yep. So what that does, it leaves me a lot of opportunity to vet this customer more Mm -hmm. and show them why we're a good fit for them and make their decision that much easier in six months or so. Completely. And you took that no and turned it into a positive. Yeah. And that is so important in sales because... You're going to hear no all the time. Uh, daily. All the time. Hourly. But you also hear constantly, and you hear this all the time. I bet you're listening to this and you're like, oh my God, my sales manager tells me this all the time. But literally, <laughs> keeping someone like in your sales like cycle mm-hmm. means that when they tell you no, that doesn't mean no forever. And even if you literally have someone, like, let's say like you have this one girl that is your point of contact. She's the decision maker or a guy or whoever. And this person is so mean to you and they hate you and they (laughs) don't want to work with you. Well, guess what? People don't stay at jobs for forever. You never know. Or they die. Or or sometimes people just die. That's the thing that happens. I've called and -and so-and-so has passed and that is a very uncomfortable phone call. Oh, gosh. But that's the worst. These are outcomes to be expected. But this happens. Yes. Stuff like that happens. So you can't ever discount a prospect. If or, they're in your wheelhouse, they're going to stay in your wheelhouse. Yes. And people also have bad days. So there's oh. a time that I called and this guy was so nasty to me. Like, I was like, I'm done. I can't. I mustn't dial anymore today. <laughs> <gasps> I'm besides myself. I need a Kit Kat. It's so easy to get. <laughs> And then I'd be like, oh my gosh, this guy that I talked to is so mean and blah, 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 blah. But then I finally, I'd go my phone block the next week. I'm like, I'm not calling him. 
A month later? Oh, heck no, I'm not calling him. <laughs> Three months later? Oh, absolutely not. Last time we talked to him, and it just keeps getting, like, scarier and scarier. And worse and worse. And then I called the guy. Nice as could be. Nice as could be. Or another lady, one of the biggest accounts I ever sold, she was like, we are just not interested. Like, we're not interested. So I stopped by. I didn't I didn't call again because I was like, oh my gosh, great. Like, she hates me. <laughs> oh my gosh, she hates me. She's going to punch me in my throat. And so I took like a little, um, we call them cedars. It was like, I, I was happy sanitizer. And they were sanitizer wipes. And I took them to her and she was so sweet. So sweet. It was like a year later. Mm-hmm. We ended up doing business together. And it was great. And we're still friends to this day. Mm-hmm. So it worked out, but you know, I think like you got to think like these people are having the trash companies, vending companies, uniform companies, mm-hmm. All, any t- anything that they could possibly use. There's a salesperson calling for them, yep. so you're probably the tenth person that hour to call them. And sometimes it's like I don't know, I got like a job I've got to do. Like these people yeah. that you're reaching out to are genuinely busy. Very busy. And not only that, but they also have, like, their real life. They have their job. They have everything. Mm -hmm. So your two-minute, you know, call that you give to them is probably not the best part of their day. Mm -hmm. So you can't be discouraged when someone's, like, super rude to you or says no or is just like, no, I don't want to meet with you. Like, okay, well, that's really great, but guess what? (laughs) I'm going to call you again. <laughs> Talk to you in six months. Bye. Bye. I don't accept that, but yeah. you're going to like me in six months again. For sure. But, and, well, something else that you have to realize, too, is, like, you just, like, you have to be nice and you have to be honest and you have to be yourself. Yes. Because if you're calling people and you are getting them, <laughs> getting the same responses constantly and people are constantly rude to you, mm-hmm. think about how you're coming off to them. Are you coming off like a robot, like a salesperson? Mr. Robot. Are you having people hang up on you all the time? Maybe it's the way you're delivering, like, what you're saying. Maybe it's the way you're talking to this person. Maybe you're not talking to them like a genuine human being. And you are talking to them. Are you saying, hi, my name's Chelsea. <laughs> they're like, hey, my name's Chelsea. Is that not how you're supposed to talk? <gasps> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we're about to have an intervention. We'll be back next week. <laughs> I used to work I used to work with this guy and I literally could tell you his exact voice inflection every single phone call he was gonna make. It was gonna be like, Hi, my name's Blank. I'm with Blank. I would like to talk to you today about Blank and we everyone like could joke about it. <laughs> and I mean the thing was, is, like, he called so many places because he was, like, a robot. Yeah. So, he did well, but if he was actually, like, a genuine person, talked to these people, yeah. like, the amount of places he was calling, he could have literally made, like, six figures at this last job in sales. But it's just, like, oh, he would fail so hard. And you would just, he, all the time, he would just stop talking because the person on the other end hung up the phone. <laughs> it was so... Oh, my it was, heart for the guy. I know. It was not good. But... Yeah, just you have to always remember that you're never going to make a sale immediately when you call someone. Almost never. Oh, uh, yeah. Almost never. I mean, you, you the might want to get The possibility of one lucky. and done for a big one, it, it happens. For sure. But it's not super common. Completely. So you're never going to make a sale, but you can always make an impression. Oh, my gosh. It's like the sun has come through the clouds and the birds are chirping. Always. Like... Just to make that good impression and be rememberable. Mm, rememberable. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> okay, Lee, there's like this thing that's called play along. <laughs> you can do it every once in a while. I can have call me out on okay. night. Rememberable. Remember, I know that word very well. Rememberable. Yeah, it's yep. a good thing. It for sure it is. Anyways, it's on Facebook. You can be rememberable. Yeah, rememberable that. Um, so that's the important thing is set yourself apart and be different, <laughs> which is also something that I think can lead us to our next part is mm-hmm. there's always going to be haters. Oh my gosh. Always. And those haters want you to be haters. There's that saying, misery loves company. Mm-hmm. Little people want you to feel little and big people want to make you feel big. Mm-hmm. End of story. That's like End a story. That's a thing. It is. So, if you surround yourself with, like, the complainers and the naysayers and the haters, 
Of course you're going to feel bad all the time. Mm-hmm. They don't want you to succeed. No. Why? I can't answer that for you. They want you to stay in your little negative bubble with them. So and that stay they at their can, level. Yep. Because, like, when you're like, man, I want to do this. Like, this makes me happy. Like, I, this is silly, but. I want to be in an all-girls traveling choir. If that makes you happy, then do it. Yeah. You know, I'm a big fan of Rachel Hollis, and that was one of the things that she talked about. Was like, if it makes you happy, then just do it. Mm-hmm. And for, for me and you, I'm sure, in, in sales, like there's always the goals that you're setting. Mm-hmm. It is okay to expect excellence from yourself. Failing doesn't mean your life is over. Just because you fail doesn't mean that you can't get right back up and do it better next time. And on that downward fall to your face as you plummet from your high expectations, (laughs) you're going to hit a few branches of knowledge along the way Mm -hmm. that are going to make a huge impact on you so you get better. Mm -hmm. It's inevitable. You're going to get better. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn things. You're going to meet people. And you can only get better. Mm -hmm. But the second that you lay face down in that mud, (laughs) get yourself up. Completely. I think a really good visual way to look at success is not... Sometimes people think of it as like stairs and you're climbing. And if you fail, you're going to fall off the stairs. And then you just start back or you fall backwards and you start climbing. But I think that it's better to think of it as like an obstacle course or a maze. Because like that. if you take a wrong turn mm-hmm. and you fail... No big deal. You literally just turn back around and try something else. Yeah. I think that I read something the other day about how, and this is obvious, this is a huge example that people use all the time, but it was the wording that really got me. And mm-hmm. like, I mean, just like, <laughs> <laughs> are you ready for this? A light bulb went off because I was reading about, guess who? Thomas Edison. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I mean, it's so common. You hear all the time, like, oh, he tried 10,000 different ways and then finally invented the light bulb and people are like oh he failed 10,000 different times but he didn't fail he succeeded in finding 10,000 ways to not make a light bulb I like that in order to find the one way to make a light bulb yes and in sales and even oh my gosh this like extends past sales this is in life in general in in life when you fail it's not that you're falling off the wagon or you're making like you're taking a step back you're Your literally over. It's not over. All you're doing is saying, hey, you know what? This is a dead end. Guess what? You can turn around. You're not a tree. You can get up and move. Mm-hmm. You can turn around and find a different way. Yeah. Find a different path. There's so many paths. And honestly, that new path is probably going to be like a thousand million billion times better. I think you can speak to that through your recent events and career oh, changes. Completely. Oh, like okay. I remember seeing you and mm-hmm. you were just like... What am I going to do? This mm-hmm. is the only thing I've ever wanted to do. And I still think you're very passionate about that. Mm-hmm. But now you have this new door that's opened. Mm-hmm. And you learned so much about yourself. Oh, my god! In that whole process. Yeah. You're a better saleswoman. You're a better businesswoman. You're, you can recognize, like, a toxic environment and toxic mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. And you're just a different person. Yeah. I mean, I have lived it and breathed it. And it's so easy to say, like, oh, like, you'll find something else. Like... But literally, like, I can tell you now, oh, life update, because I, we've mentioned this in another podcast, life mm-hmm. update, I have a job, everyone, and it is absolute. I got a new job, just started it, absolutely incredible. Mm-hmm. I, honest to God, think that, like, everything in my life has been leading up to me working for this company. Like, it is the weirdest, most natural, wonderful fit the opportunities that I have in front of me are bigger than I ever imagined for myself. And it was all because I took a huge fall at the beginning of this year. And I thought that I literally had, I literally thought that I had nowhere to go. I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't talk about motivating people because I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. Mm-hmm. And all, all I did was I just like opened myself up and I wasn't desperate. And I just said, you know what, universe, just bring me what I need. And the universe brought me what I needed. Like on a silver freaking platter. On a silver platter. And that said, wear these shoes. Yep. And I wore them shoes. <laughs> so great. So I think that you have to... Oh, and it's so hard. It's so hard to trust that a failure is a good thing. 
Because you can say that to your blue in the face. Yep. But unless you actually experience it and learn from it, you don't know. Because failing is scary. Oh, it's terrifying. It's super scary. But, like, I literally promise. I, I promise you. And if for if one day you fail and this is not true, literally call me and I'll give you $100. Like, I do not care. <laughs> like, I will literally Venmo you $100. But I'm telling you to your face, failure is the best thing that's ever going to happen to you in life. It's bold. It is. I like it. But it is because really it comes to how you take that failure, right? Mm-hmm. And how you put that into something good. How you learn from it. Mm -hmm. You've got to learn from it. It's like the whole counting how many no's before you get a yes. Yep. And also looking at your successes. Not just in like the big picture. Like I got this job. I graduated with this degree. I did all. I bought a house. I got married. Well, the first success was finding the right person or giving that person a chance, going on that date, going to that class, taking that job, Mm -hmm. working hard, studying. Those are all little successes. They're all little good choices that led to better choices that led to great choices that led to you Mm -hmm. doing what you're doing and where you're at. Completely. It's like that whole, when you get told no, that's fine. Put them back in your bucket. Mm -hmm. Keep filling that bucket because eventually that bucket's going to tip over. Mm Mm-hmm. And you've got all of the the fruits of your labors. All the fruits of your labors. <laughs> <laughs> your crop is ready to be picked. I love it. So oh, that's so true. Yeah. And I think another thing too that we really wanted to touch on today is, and I think this goes along with that, is it is totally okay for you to want more in life. Yes. It is it's okay to demand it from yourself. De- oh my gosh. It is okay. Yes. What a good word. It is okay to demand more. Yeah. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be more than this. Today I did this and tomorrow I'm going to do that even better. It's mm-hmm. okay to demand. I demand that I'm happy and that I am going to open myself up for all of these good things. Mm-hmm. It's okay to demand that you want the very best for yourself. Because if you don't want it for you, no one else is going to want it for you. And if they do, it doesn't matter because you're not accepting it. Yep. So go out there. Demand it, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> demand it. I love it. But you, well, I think it's, it's so difficult to accept that because big goals can be scary. Like, yeah. and we're taught so many times in the corporate world that obviously you want to have these big goals, but you're you want to be achievable. achievable and realistic because sometimes you don't know in some office environments and some, you know, in some corporations, if you don't hit those goals, guess what? You're fired yeah. or guess what? You are getting demoted or you're not getting this and there's huge consequences. So it can be scary, but I think it's totally okay for you to look at those big goals and to want to achieve them. And yeah. not just to want to achieve them, but to demand of yourself that you have to do that. Yeah. To be in 100%. Because if you're not in 100%, what are you doing? And why are you doing it? And why are you there? Yeah. Get up and go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> just don't get up. <laughs> just don't get up at all. Don't even get up. Unless you're going to be 100. You got one life, man. You do. One life. You're ne- Tomorrow is only going to happen once. Mm -hmm. Today is never going to happen again. Mm -hmm. So, I know that sounds so corny, but literally, today will never happen again. Ever. So, what what happened today? Not every day is going to be like moving mountains and something crazy and Mm life-changing. But if you, it's like when you run a race and you put your 100% in it, you know you put your 100% in it. If you're out working and you're putting your 100% in it, mm-hmm. maybe today you didn't sell something, but because you worked so hard, the sales cycle for me, I don't know, it could be different for you and other mm-hmm. individuals, but for me, I'm working three to six months basically ahead. So what I'm doing now, I will see the fruits of my labors in probably three to six months. Mm-hmm. So if I'm really putting it all in and doing all the things, it's going to pay off. Mm -hmm. But sales isn't always instant gratification. Oh my gosh. It's not. That's why that impression and being rememberable (laughs) is so important. It's important. Well, and too, let me... 
let me ask you this. Have you ever gone to work and just killed it? Maybe you didn't make a sale that day, but you were so productive and you made so much. Got your list checked. You got your list checked. You did everything. And then you left and you were like, ugh, I feel terrible. No. No. no like, no. you're never going to feel bad for working hard. No. Ever. You're for always getting your to-do list done. Never. When you complete tasks and you do what you set out to do, you are never going to feel bad about it. Ever. You just, it's like when you go and work out, do you feel bad that you just got done working out? Yes. You're not going to regret that. Oh, crap. I worked out today. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Well, sales and working out are so similar. You got to start somewhere. And you're probably going to look goofy, feel goofy, and... Mm-hmm. Whatever. Here's one thing I will say if you're going to the gym because it's new year, new you, all the things. And one of the biggest things is like, oh, I'm worried about what people are going to, people are going to watch me. Don't flatter yourself. People are there to work out for them too. Just like when you're dialing on the phone. Oh my gosh, I don't want to say this in front of people because I feel weird and I sound weird. Well, the more you put that out there, the weirder you sound and people are going to hear that. And mm-hmm. guess what? Everybody started from somewhere. Everyone. So get over yourself. I can't even... Do the thing. Tell you how terrible my first couple phone calls probably were. (laughs) Like, they were really bad. Like, really, really bad. Like, not good. Like, embarrassing. Like, I don't ever want to go back in time. I'm so glad that time travel has not been invented because I never want to hear myself. But guess what? (laughs) You have to do it to get better at it. Yeah. You have to do it. I read, I read in a sales book once and it literally just said how to get better at cold cold calls is you make more cold calls. (laughs) It's like, well, duh, but it's just so, it's so true and it's so easy and it's so hard. Your first one is going to be like, hi, um, hi, my name is Chelsea. How are you? Oh, cool. Well, um, I'm just calling about this because I wanted to share with you that... Blah. Hi, I just, like, just, like, didn't want to take up too much of your time, but, like, I just wanted to know, like, do you have... Do you... Oh, you're not interested? Okay, bye. Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. But you were nice, though. You least. were nice. Very memorable. Very memorable. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Yes. But we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier about, you know, little people want you to feel little with Mm -hmm. them because misery loves company. Mm -hmm. Now imagine, imagine this. You hang out with people that only make you feel good about yourself. They want you to be your best self and you to do all the best things. How do you think you're going to feel? Amazing. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Motivated. Better. Exactly. So if we have all of these people feeling so good about what they're doing, don't you think that maybe the world would be a better place and women could have each other's back a little bit more? Yes. I don't know why. I don't know if it's intimidation. I don't know if it's jealousy. I'm a very competitive person Mm -hmm. and everyone wants to be number one. But like us as women, like we have so much of a voice and a pull and an opinion Mm -hmm. that if we could just use that to help each other versus hurt each other Mm -hmm. we could destroy anything and anyone Mm -hmm. like as far as i'm like destroy but (laughs) you know what i mean like what you said like you could like murder it like you yeah, can kill it you not like so destroy good. a world or yeah that was <laughs> poor wording on my toilet. but like you could just do amazing things mm-hmm. there's this person that um <laughs> has a presentation and he doesn't want to share it with me and he's not even in like my my office but the fact that he's so intimidated that i would maybe use his work for a customer that we're not even competing for at the same blows my mind yep a of all, get over yourself. Mm-hmm. B of all, I would share my ideas if it benefits me and helped me. Why wouldn't you share that? Mm-hmm. We're all on the same team here. Well, it has to do with a lot of when people are insecure mm-hmm. and when people are really intimidated by others, it's more a reflection of themselves. And yeah. it's 
they feel bad about themselves and they don't want to show that to other people. Yeah. And so we tend to put others down because it takes the pressure off of us because we feel like terrible about ourselves. I think, I mean, I've done that. Oh, everyone's guilty of it. I'm not sitting here being like, oh no, I only speak positively about everyone that I encounter. No, of course not. Like, we're all human. Like, it happens to all of us, but you can't get in a cycle of doing that constantly. Like, you can do it. You can catch yourself. Because, like, here's the thing. There are crappy people in this world. Mm. And some people, it's okay if you feel the need to just, like, oh my gosh, like, this person is so awful. Like... (laughs) I gotta like talk about them because that has happened to me <laughs> yeah <laughs> many times this year that's okay but you have to accept that and then get over it and not like dwell on it and hang on to it yeah. and realize that you know what that's how they are and I'm not gonna be like that and I'm not gonna talk about it and I'm not gonna let them affect me and I'm not gonna let that person steal my energy yeah which is really hard to do because if you can <laughs> not that affect you your heart fell out of your butt when you were about three years old Because anyone with feelings and, like, the ability to connect with other people emotionally, you can have five million compliments, Mm -hmm. but the one time someone says, I don't like this, or I don't like you, or you could have done this differently, that's what you're going to think about. Oh, it happened to me the other night. Can I tell you the story? Tell me. This is the dumbest thing, but it bothered me for a straight hour. I went out to a bar the other night, and I felt I was getting so many compliments on my outfit. Because I was so fucking fly. I had the purple fur coat on. I had the oh, black fit. Yeah. I was killing it. And I walked out, and these two girls were standing, um, like, right outside the door. And were like, oh, my gosh, where did you get your coat? I love it. And I was like, yes, oh, my gosh, like, thank you, ladies. Like this is, And, like, I felt, like, such womanly love. And I'm like, this is awesome. And then, like, as I was walking away... Their one friend who was like standing behind them just <laughs> pops her head out and is like, Yeah, but that purse is from 2007. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, like hearing that now, I laugh so hard, but in that moment, I literally was like, I'm gonna fight this person. I don't even know what that insult means. Just so you know, 2007 was a good year for me. I'm like, First off. <laughs> But also, hey, this person, it's a plain black purse. I do not know where this co- this like comment was coming from. But anyways, I thought about that, and I was so mad about that the entire night, and it completely ruined every compliment that I got. Yeah. But, like, I felt that way. I mean, I woke up the next morning, and I was like, okay, maybe that was a little dumb that I was upset about that for an hour, because that's kind of funny. But, like, oh my gosh. it's impossible, unless you're literally a sociopath. Yeah. Like you said, who's hard on another problem when they're three years old and they have no emotions. Mm-hmm. To not let that negative stuff affect you a little bit. It's going to happen. But what you can do is not let it affect you a To the lot. point of no return. Correct. Feelings are feelings. Feelings are good. Okay? Oh, feelings are completely good. It's okay to love yourself. It's okay to love what you do. That's the other thing. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Like... To be proud of yourself. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be like, I did this. And it's not just a little thing. Like, Mm -hmm. I love that I did this. This is what I'm doing. Or if you have an idea and you feel like it might be silly, but it makes you happy and you feel like it's fulfilling something for you, that isn't just a little idea. Mm -mm. Go after it and be proud of it. Be be so proud of it that you want to tell the world because good things are going to come your way. It just... It is. They are. When you think good thoughts, good things happen. Yeah, and when you think negative thoughts, negative things happen. Yeah. I have to be extra, like, positive thoughts because I have an RBF hard. (laughs) So, like, if I'm negative, like, my RBF, like, is extra RBF-y. Yeah. But if I'm, like, happy, then I'm, like, only slightly RBF-y. But then people hear my voice, like, oh, she's not upset. It's right. just her face. <laughs> <laughs> it's just your face. You just look. It's, you just look like that. But it's you know what? You've recognized that about yourself. I know. It's like, it's and a thing. And you're fixing it. And I can, it's just the Botox. It is. It's the Botox. <laughs> We're not angry. We just can't move our faces. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. 
<laughs> On the inside, I am very happy. On the outside, I am stone cold. <laughs> I'm going to look great when I'm 70. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. It's, it's not RBF, it's Botox. Thanks. It is. Thanks. <laughs> but you know what? Botox makes us feel good, so, like, screw y'all. Yeah, it's fine. And if it makes you feel good, do it. And if it doesn't, don't. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But it's okay to have, like, if you have something that really speaks to you, it's okay to go after it. If there's somebody that you really think would be great for your business or customer that you want, Mm -hmm. go after it. Do your research. Find find out the things. Like, if you have a customer and you know they have a dog and the dog's name is Bacon, take Bacon some treats. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, people like to feel like they're hurt. Put yourself in their situation. If you had somebody who was genuine and listened, mm-hmm. sales is what ninety percent listening, ten percent talking. Oh my gosh! Like just l- genuinely listen. Mm-hmm. Like I am so much more prone to go with somebody when they remember my name, they know my husband's name, they know my dog's name, they know all these things because it's like, oh mm-hmm. wow, like I'm not just another sell to you maybe i am but you have a really great way of covering that yeah and being genuine Mm -hmm. but do the research because if they're really that big of a deal and you really want them Mm -hmm. put in the time for it yeah i think too especially now that i'm in a new role in a new position i'm getting all these like anxieties like oh my gosh i don't know what to say what if i say the wrong thing but the most important thing that you have to remember is when you're sitting in a meeting or you're on the phone with someone just listen to what they're saying just listen and almost 99 percent of the time they're going to tell you what they want they're going to tell you what they want out of you out of your company and it's your job to just help them yeah and be a human and be a human oh Oh, my gosh be a human just be be a a human don't be a robot like they have to deal with all that stuff every day just be a human Mm -hmm. like say I literally on the phone today was talking to a person I'm trying to set a meeting with and I set the meeting and um, I said you know I've dealt with you all in the past but I was dealing with so and so her last day was Thursday people are always changing we talk about that um, and I was like and they, I know that you guys were interested in this product but it was just not the right timing so you know the salesperson me didn't hear no they heard a maybe so you're saying I got a chance <laughs> and she thought that was funny like it was just real and relatable. And you were being honest. I, yes. Oh my gosh, that is so, so... I mean, that is the best piece of advice. When you're in any aspect of business, if you're being honest with someone without being like... To be completely honest with you. If oh my you're gosh, just being honest. <laughs> you know what people say? Can I just be honest? Well, were you going to lie to us? I know, time? like, were you lying to me five minutes ago? Like, so, and now you're being honest? Yeah, like, no. stop saying that. Yes. There's your golden nugget for this episode. Yeah. Don't use weak language. Don't say, I'm just being honest. Don't do that. Can I just be honest? Just literally just be honest the whole time and you don't have to say that. Yeah. But you... I really felt that. Good. I really felt that. That was great. But you're being honest in that call and in that conversation and they probably were like, oh my gosh, okay, well, I can probably trust this person and they're going to tell me it like it is. A no is not always a bad thing to hear, okay? Mm Mm-hmm. Then there's other there's so many other people that you can go and call, mm-hmm. and you can put your time and energy into that. Sometimes it's just knowing what the sell is. There's three different types of sales. There's a sell where you are an order taker. Mm-hmm. There's a sell where you're a problem solver and you actually have to do the work to sell it. Mm-hmm. And there's a no, not right now. Mm-hmm. So which of that which sell is you, are you going into? Mm-hmm. And then you strategize around that. Because if someone's like, I want to give you my business, but I want X, Y, and Z freaking listen to x y and z and produce x y and z don't offer a b and q they don't want a b and q they want x y and z okay so don't want yes. to be like well i think you no it doesn't matter what you think be the order taker mm-hmm. love it okay the next one you have a solution that you need to help them get through something so be their consultant and help them through this and the third one no well you're saying I have a chance because you're going to have your agreement come up or you're going to get fired or you're going to quit mm-hmm. or something else could happen. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> An untimely death. <laughs> Unfortunately, 
Those are very uncomfortable calls that do happen. Um, and someone else is going to be there. And so you want to be on your toes and you want to know when the game is getting played. Mm-hmm. The best thing about a no is you know when their agreement, if you're dealing with people in agreements, when that agreement is coming up. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. That is literally your golden nugget. You know when the game's going to be played, where the ball's going to be thrown, and when to be there. Yep. And when you control when the game starts and ends, you can never lose the game. Oh. I think that's our golden nugget. That's it. That's the end. So, guys, <laughs> just stay true to yourself. Be genuine. And know it is okay to have big old fat dreams because you get one life one day and you don't want to look back and think, man, I should have done that. Yep. And help each other out. It's okay to, like, be helpful and Mm -hmm. support other human beings. Yep. And because I will tell you this, if you push people down to get ahead of them, you're only going to get so far because before someone bigger sees what you're doing and pushes you down. Yep. And there's this thing called karma. Yeah. (laughs) And it'll come back around and bite you. (laughs) Yeah. So thanks so much today for tuning in. We hope that we helped you a little bit. Shed a little fun sunshine. A little fun fun sunshine. Some memorables. Some memorables. Some positives. (laughs) (laughs) And make sure to... uh, Rate, review, subscribe to us on all of your all of your favorite podcast platforms. Um, subscribe to our Instagram page, CJ and Cell Podcast, and make sure to tune in next week. We are talking to Sarah Farrell, the Gen X girl. And y'all, Aww. if you are having issues with burnout or you are feeling stuck and you are just feeling like you are in a rut in your job, you are gonna want to listen to this because she is incredible. So thank you for tuning in, and have a wonderful week. Have the best day ever. Bye.